Hello, this is a basic impacted or moderately impacted, partially impacted wisdom tooth extraction case. This is how you like to see wisdom teeth come in. Because this young woman was about 18 or 20, so there's still follicular sacs around the teeth that were impacted and they have this conical shape, which means there's a good chance they're gonna just roll right out. So let's look at this case. You can see the upper right, upper left, lower left, and lower right wisdom tooth. So they're at a nice angle and should just roll right out of there. Painless and profound local anesthesia, very important. This patient is sedated intravenously. And we're gonna always, when I'm taking out four wisdom teeth, I always start with the lower left, then the upper left, then the lower right, then the upper right. The left, since I'm right-handed, is always more involved, usually more involved than the right side. So I wanna do the hardest things first, just because of access, and then the right size. So you can see this one is partially impacted. Be sure you block the airway with your finger or a two by two. With these, especially when they're shaped like this, you don't wanna pop one out and the patient aspirate it. So that's critical that you block the airway either with a finger or a two by two because these can be just slick like a little pea. Now, why didn't I pack this socket? When do I pack the socket? I've never had a dry socket. If I have to use a burr and cut the bone in any way, I always pack the socket. If I don't, if the tooth just comes straight out, then I normally don't because you really don't have to worry about a dry sock. You haven't done anything to the bone. So that's why I don't pack, I haven't packed these lower sockets. So I put two, I put one to two suture for lower wisdom teeth extractions and usually just one for a max for maxillary wisdom teeth extraction. Now when I'm suturing, I usually go one, two, three, pull away from me, then I do one toward me pull, then one away from me pull. Three just kind of locks it in on the first one one, two, three, pull, and then one toward me, pull, then another one away from me, pull. So usually I do two suture on a lower, one on an upper. Okay, there's a wisdom too. So I'm, I'm making a vertical incision at the distal facial of the tooth through the attached gingiva up into the uh, non-keratinized or unattached gingiva. Then I'm reflecting with a periodontal elevator. Now, in these cases, I'll often try to find the space between the wis impacted wisdom tooth and the tooth in front of it with the periodontal elevator. Because it's got a small tip. You see, I've got the two by two blocking the airway because you don't want that to pop out. Use this crossbar elevator and just roll it out. Now, if it's totally impacted, you're gonna have a follicular sac and you wanna be sure to remove that. If it's partially or non-impacted, you're not gonna have a follicular sac and you so you don't have to worry about removing it. So three away from me and you wanna hold the tip so you don't have a lot of suture that you're cutting off. Then one toward me, you wanna take it toward the, t the small end so you don't have a lot of suture that you're wasting. Now I'm, I was doing the intraligamental injection on that lower wisdom tooth. So I'm cutting up the ramus of the mandible, keep it, make the cut toward the distal facial of the tooth. Just to open that tissue a little bit, then I'm elevating, so nothing's happening here. I'm, gonna, I'm guarding the airway with my aspirator. Here comes the tooth. Got a two by two in there also. Protect that airway. Sure you don't have a follicular sac. 3-0 gut suture. You want to take a deep bite in the tissue, in the flap on both sides. If you take just a little shallow one, it'll pull loose. It'll tear through the tissue. So one, two, three, away, pull. One toward me, pull. 
one away pull. Then I don't have much suture on the short end. I don't want to waste it. See, so I'm making two suture. I usually do two. See, I'm taking that deep bite on lower wisdom teeth. One, two, three. You push down with your finger. I had some fabulous oral surgery training in a two-year oral surgery fellowship after dental school at Baylor Doc College of Dentistry. Dr. D. Lamar Bird was the chairman of the department. That's a whole other story, how I got in that fellowship, but it's changed my whole life. It was fantastic, just some tremendous instruction. So I'm doing the intraligamental injection on each of these teeth. That's critical because if it's painful, things are not going to go well. The incision at the distal facial of the second molar up into the non-keratinized or unattached gingiva. And then I'm going to cut around the second molar on the facial, cut all the way to bone. So I'm using this periosteal elevator and trying to elevate the tooth. Now this is an interesting tooth because I couldn't get it to elevate. So I'm going to show you another technique. I could just barely get it to move. She had a small mouth. So I'm using this burr. You can use a straight handpiece with a, a straight burr and just drilling a hole directly into the wisdom tooth. Now don't go this way because you don't want to damage the second molar. For you want to drill it straight into the wisdom tooth. You're creating a purchase point. Then once I've done that, you want to go pretty far into the tooth. Use this Euphredi E8 has a tip on it. You can stick it into that hole, elevate. See, I've got the two by two in here. I've got the suction. You don't want that tooth popping out. Move the follicular sac. I'm going to use one suture. One, two, three, away. Keep it, push it toward the short end and one towards you. One, two, three. Doesn't matter which way you go first. Just go, if you go towards you first, then go away, then towards you. If you go away from you, go away from you three. One towards you, one away. See, there's the hole I drill in the tooth, and then you can elevate it if you can't get a purchase point. And there's a hole in that wisdom tooth. That's the dental minute. These techniques work, and they work every time. Are you ready to take your dentistry practice to the highest level possible? Of course you are. Subscribe right now to DentistryMasterclasses.com where you will get Dr. Cupper's greatest work and best cases. Here's what you're going to get when you subscribe to DentistryMasterclasses.com. Incredible comprehensive cases not seen in Dental Minute videos. You will get an organized library of all the Dental Minute videos and Dentistry Masterclasses, comprehensive cases for study and reference, before and after photos of Dr. Cupper's fantastic restored cases. Cases. And all of this, I repeat, all of this is just $40 a month. This is something you cannot pass up. Subscribe right now to DentistryMasterclasses.com.